Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Level Economics course. Today we're going to be moving on in section 2 and looking at the price elasticity of demand, otherwise known as PED. What is the price elasticity of demand? The definition of PED is the measure of the responsiveness of the quantity demanded of a product following a change in its price. So the elasticity pretty much refers to how inclined the curve is going to be on a demand graph and the responsiveness of this change in price, which will affect the amount of quantity that people will want to buy of it, is known as the elasticity. We'll begin by looking at a relatively inelast or elastic curve. Here we have the elastic curve. Now, as we can see, it's pretty flat. It's not quite exactly, it's slightly inclined, but it's close to being 180 degrees straight. If we put point A onto it, we can draw off the two lines into the price axis and the quantity demanded axis as normal. Now, how we see the change in prices and quantity demanded based on the elasticity is by drawing on another point. Now, we can see that if we change the price from P to P1 by decreasing it, there's going to be a huge change in the quantity demanded as it shifts from Q to Q1. From this, we can see that a relatively elastic curve is going to be one which has a very responsive change in quantity demanded following a minor change in price. Now we're going to be looking at relatively inelastic curves. Contrary to the other curve, this one is very, very steep and isn't flat at all. So we can stick on our point A and draw off our points into the price and quantity demanded axes, and then point B. This time, we can see that a big change in price doesn't really influence the change in quantity demanded much. So as a result, contrary to the rel relatively elastic curve, we can say that a change in price won't really be very responsive in the change of quantity demanded. Calculating PED. We can also calculate the price elasticity of demand using a formula, and this is the change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price. So we'll run through an example now. Here we have a graph that's showing us the price and the quantity demanded of a certain product. We can tell that the graph has relatively an elastic curve. So now we have to work out the PED. First, we're going to have to work out the percentage change in quantity demanded, as we know in our formula. So what we do is we take 5, which is the difference between 45 and 50, divide that by 45 and multiply it by 100. This gives us 11. Then we do the percentage change in the price, which is 10, the difference between 20 and 30, divided by 30 times 100, which gets us 33. Our final step is simply to divide 11 by 33, and this gets us 0 0.3. The value that we get can tell us something about the elasticity of demand, because you may be wondering, what does you know, 0 0.3 mean? If the score is less or the value is greater than 1, it's going to be relatively elastic. And this is what a relatively elastic curve looks like. If it's going to be 1 exactly, we say that it is unitary elastic. And this is what we looked at in our previous video, where we just have a st straight standard demand curve. However, if it's less than 1, it's going to be relatively inelastic, and this is what we found in our example of 0 0.3. Factors affecting elasticities. There are a number of characteristics that a product is going to have when we give it a certain elasticity. Goods with many substitutes are going to be elastic. This is because if you know the price is going to change in one of the substitutes, the demand is going to change greatly because people will just go and buy another product which they can replace it with. Goods that are cheap are generally inelastic because if a change in price does come about, people aren't going to be really bothered with the fact that the price has changed. As a result, they may still buy the product, hence making it inelastic because the price isn't going to be very responsive. Goods that have a better brand loyalty are going to be inelastic. This is because people are very loyal to the brand and if it changes its price, there's not going to be that much of a change in the quantity demanded, hence making it inelastic. And goods that are addictive, such as cigarettes or drugs or possibly alcohol, are also inelastic because people can't seem to stop you know, consuming them because they're addicted. As a result, a change in price isn't really going to influence that much of quantity demanded, hence making it inelastic. Most of these examples are pretty logical, so you can probably think through them in your exam. If you come across a product which isn't listed on here and you don't know whether it's going to be elastic or inelastic, Okay, so here we have some questions. What I'd like you to do now is have a go at attempting these questions on another sheet of paper and pause the video so you have time to answer them.
Hit play whenever you're ready to see the answers. Here are the answers. If you did get all of these right, congratulations, I'd advise you to move on to the next video, which is going to be about the income elasticity of demand. If you didn't, be sure to check out www.revisealevel.co.uk where you can find this lesson's notes in the description and notes on a bunch of A-level subjects. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.